again. Welcome back to the digital entertainment stage for our evening program of speakers. Really happy to see you here. Um, we have a session on 360 video and a session on drones. Three speakers uh, starting at 8, so a lot of interesting stuff here. Um, well, it's almost impossible to walk around at campus party and not have experienced 360 video of VR because it's all over the place, but it's usually like this roller coaster experience, something fun and something crazy, and not so much storytelling. And I think VR or 360 video is really suitable for that. So our is our next speaker. Uh, Hans Jaap Melissen is a war journalist. So he basically literally risks his life to, be to tell the story <laughs> behind the war for us. So uh, that alone, you should give him a big hand. But um, he will talk uh, uh, a bit more about 360 videos and how to uh, use it to tell the story uh, about refugees, to really get you involved, to really get you activated, and 360 is perfect for that. So uh, for his work, by the way, he has been rewarded Journalist of the Year, so I'm really happy and excited that he's here. The stage is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you can all hear me clearly, yeah? Yeah, because it's a bit noisy in this uh, big hall. It gives it a more empty feeling, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm Hans Jaap Melissen, as she said. Um, usually I travel around the world looking for trouble, uh, for war, disaster. And basically I always work with radio, TV, writing, until like um, one and a half year ago, I was approached by a company that makes um, 360 video. They wrote me an email, said, we always go to these war zones, and we think that our new technology is very suitable for what you do. And, um, and I said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll come to your office. I didn't know what it was, 360 video. They, they wrote virtual reality, which is also like a m maybe not the right term for what I do. I, I film 360 video. But uh, when, I was, when I arrived at that office, they said, we can explain anything about it, but you have to experience it, and that's the problem a little bit tonight. We cannot, you sitting there, I cannot give you all like a, a headset. We can do it further on, uh, so you can experience it. But um, I can talk about it, I can show you some stuff, and I can tell a little bit about how it, um, and why I like it so much. Because for me, it was like a journalistic wish come true, because I always had a feeling that as a, in my TV work, I always show like a small picture of what's happening. The, the, the TV crews, me included, we focus on part of reality. But if you have like a camera that can look around, you can show more what's happening. And then maybe the, bit, the demonstration that you're filming is only 20 people and behind there's nothing happening. And I think in a lot of news reports, you get like a very outline view of reality and with 360 video that can change one of the important um, I can do like this probably yeah. uh, this is the book I wrote about ISIS I'm doing a lot about ISIS these days but um, we have to skip some yeah, that's the wrong way I'll do it like this um, Yeah, th there's nobody here who hasn't watched VR yet, or, yeah? Yeah, the, the VR virgins we call, okay. Well, uh, maybe later after the, after the presentation you can, um, we I can show you. It. For me, it is the added value of taking, place, uh, taking people to places they cannot go and painting the more honest picture. And I want you first to go back to Port-au-Prince, Haiti, in 2010, because I went there. There was an earthquake. And I reported on that earthquake, and the earthquake, when I was there, became really, really big. Everybody was, like, talking about it. so many people died, and the complete city was destroyed, the, the capital of Haiti. And I found out, by doing research, uh, something about the death toll, that the death toll was not 300,000, but it was, like, 50,000. I reported on that, but my difficulty was that so many people saw these, like, paintings of destruction like this and not the camera the other way around that I 
at that moment wished I had like a 360 camera. They were already like uh, technically, they existed already, but not in the smart way we have now. Because then you could show and uh, convince people like, look, we only give you like a secluded thing, a, pa a part of reality. So in finding the truth, it is an important weapon, I think. And th those guys from Scopic, it's, it's the company that makes these VR videos, they said, hey, we want you to go into a war zone. And I thought, like, well, taking like a complicated camera, we film with six GoPros, is very hard, if you still don't know the technology, to go into a war zone where you have to look at a lot of things to just survive. So we started filming, um, doing some stuff first on refugees in the Netherlands. Um, and this is in an asylum center in, uh, in Holland. The guy, by the way, is a refugee, a Syrian refugee from Raqqa. And, um, but the problem, the problem that we had with the first camera that we, that we used, you can still hear me, yeah? Um, was that the, it became too hot. The, 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 the batteries, the, the, the f six GoPros, they were too close together. And we, um, we had a certain moment, we had to stop and ask this guy in the asylum center for the refrigerator to put the camera there and to cool it off. So that was not a good camera then. But later, there was the VR in between all the vegetables. Later, we went filming with this rig. The camera is a little bit more apart, so they can't overheat by heating each other. And then we took the camera uh, to Lesbos, uh, the island where until like a few months ago, like every day, a lot of refugees arrived. Situation has changed now, but... And there we made our uh, first like, VR movie, and I want to show you, but I have to do something here where, now let me see if it's going to work, because let me see if we can get this started. Also, playing VR videos can be sometimes a hassle. Is it going to happen? We have sound? Yeah, it's coming, I think. Yeah. Is there sound? Well, you can see now that I, I, by touching the mouse pad, I can, I can turn this around. Um, can you see me? Apparently there's no sound, but you get the idea, the subtitle by the way, another big problem when you edit VR videos, where do you put the subtitle? Um, let, let's, let's watch this scene. You can see uh, a boat arriving. When I turn this perspective, you can see that there are more people there. Also me, by the way. And in a way, you can see the perspective of the refugees arriving. It gets a bit like now out of focus, I think, ab about strange shape. Because the, um, the best way to see it is in this... Uh, gear VR then you're like then you feel you're there uh, you put your phone in with the same movie my son five years old I put the, the goggles on him for example and he immediately like went looking I said ah daddy can I walk to the water you feel almost as you're as if you're there I had people saying like oh I, I felt like I should help those people coming from the boat it's a very empathetic uh, media you, 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 people are obliged to keep watching if they see it in the glasses. They cannot, they, they can turn away and look what's happening uh, next to you, but it's a bit pity we don't have a sound. You see, by the way, that I will, you can try later on, or it's on, this, this video is on, um, on YouTube, Lesbos 360, you can watch it at home also. 
But basically, you get the idea. Let me see. Let me get back to the, um, the PowerPoint. And then we get... What the fuck is happening here? Sorry about this. this um, that's the thing. I if you want to watch the 360 video, you it takes you out of the... Um, thank Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but it doesn't work, eh? I mean, nothing works here. It's terrible. I, I, yeah, I, I, it's working now? <laughs> Let me see. You see me working with the camera? The complicated thing when, hap when I was filming with this camera, it is all new to me. I, I'm used to like w uh, filming with a normal camera, and I know how to do that. And here we had the idea because, well, it's 360 video, you can see everything that happens around you, that we should disappear as makers, as a reporter. So we first put it on the beach when a boat was coming, and we switched it on. And it's a complicated work. You have to switch on six cameras, first standby, then you, f uh, you, you press play. There's like 12 things you have to do. And then we run away when the boat <laughs> arrives. But the thing is, these people are refugees. They come from a war zone. And they are used to bombs exploding, and then they see like this strange bleeping thing standing there, and us running away and then hiding behind something. It's almost like we are about to detonate a bomb. So uh, we decided not to do that anymore because also when we were like out of the picture, sometimes people walked to the camera and started looking at it. And if you watch people, uh, if they come too close to the camera, the, the picture gets disturbed, or they just touch it and you can't film. So while filming at Lesbos, we decided that, what the heck, it's 360 video, uh, you are able to see everything, why just not stand in the picture? So you can decide where you look, if you have your goggles on or you play with your mouse, you can decide which part of this 360 panorama view you watch. So that's uh, what we did. We, we, we stayed in the video, I talked to the camera, because I think in 360 storytelling, you should yeah, there's another uh, Rico Teta S. Huh? In, um, well, like, look, there's a 360 camera right now filming me and filming you. And what I also said in the beginning of this video of Lesbos, you couldn't hear it, uh, I, s I talked to the viewers. I said, like, look, if you're now looking at me, you should turn your head uh, 180 degrees around and you can see, like, Turkey, where the refugees are coming from. That's not something that I can say when I'm talking to like the regular camera there, because that's only focused on me. So we had do it while doing it. We developed ways of, well, making a, like a documentary. How do we do that? It's l a learning experience, and it, it still is. Also, how do you make cuts between scenes, and how long are your scenes? Because people are like, I, I always talk from the perspective that like people are watching with, with a headset. I think that's the best experience you can get. And this thing, well, like what I did now on the um, on the computer, that's nice. It's like Google Street View, but it's not the real thing. This is the real thing. And people are, you don't know when you like cut to a different scene where people are. They have their heads, they're looking maybe at something, and then suddenly you decide in the edit, it's enough, we're going to go to the next scene. So what we do, we take longer scenes than I do in regular t TV, like at least 20 seconds. In 20 seconds, you can adjust to where you are and look around. And and then we still do like a black fade, not like a hard cut, but the, the picture goes a little bit too black and then goes to the next scene. Because people might get dizzy, like still looking around, and you cut to the next scene and they are lost somewhere. Let me show some. Well, here you see the camera. Well, I don't know what's happening, but. I should click on them, maybe. Um, yeah, listen, man. This is uh, not doing it. 360 video is complete. Yeah, as a question, yeah. Sorry, what? Yeah, you can find. It. You can rotate like I did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's also some, it's also very complicated sometimes to have a good working PowerPoint. Oh, really? 
Man. Yeah. Well, I, let me, I, I, I will just do it like this. You can watch this picture. I will do it like this. Nothing happening. No problem. You can, like, we're going to watch it. So. Uh, it's a pity I cannot show these. I really cannot show these videos. I can. Let's, let's get out of this picture. Can we just get out of this? And I'll just play them from the, from the screen here, okay? With PowerPoint. With PowerPoint, please. One second. I tried to show you a video of, of, of something from the war zone. Is it working? But it would be nice if you can see this. This is like a flat video, but... Because now I want to take you into a war zone. Ja, ik lig nu op een uh, plat dak met een randje, vlakbij de plek waar dus iets ontploft is, vermoedelijk een auto. Ik zag een auto branden. Ik zag ook het café-restaurant waar ik elke avond eet branden. En het is in de christelijke wijk van Erbil. En er wordt steeds geschoten ook. Zijn dat waarschuwingen geschoten? Zijn er nog terroristen die hier rondlopen? Het is onduidelijk. Het is een chaotische situatie. Een chaotisch einde aan een vrij rustige vrijdag. Yeah, this is part of my work. I, this is last year in uh, northern Iraq. Um, I just walked into my hotel again, and then a big explosion went off in the same street, like uh, 200 meters away. A car bomb exploded. That's a, a regular occurrence in parts of Baghdad. It's not too much happening there, but my immediate reaction was grab my camera, my regular camera, and run there, make pictures. And with my regular camera, I can do that. But with my 360 camera, with all these GoPros, I would have been busy setting up all these buttons and then people would be maybe looking strange at me, like what is he doing? Is he part of the uh, act of playing bombs here? So for me, in many situations, I cannot work with VR. Uh, you can work with, this is, this is a perfect example, by the way, of a camera that w is like, you press it and you can record. But the quality from this uh, camera, the Ricoh Theta, is not good enough to watch it through these goggles. Because there's another, well, you need higher resolution because you, you watch through another lens and then th the picture gets darker and more blurred. It's like almost filmed at night. So for me, if I really want to work with a camera not only at refugee situations, which are usually a little bit more safe, it is important for me that there will be a better camera um, with better quality and like press and go. And that's not there yet. It's all like a little bit low quality. Yeah? Oh, there's something happening. Let me see what's... Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, I'll do the arrows. Also, some mistakes we made when, when filming was like, we put the camera too high. You see, here's a stick. And I think the camera represents the viewer. The, the camera is, the, for me, the camera is the viewer. I talk to the viewer, the viewer is there. It's like a person. And because you will see it from that perspective. And this is like a, like a bird's perspective in a way. Also, we didn't want people to run into the camera. They, they arrive here, but later on we were more aware of um, from which viewpoint we had to film. It's a learning experience, so that's what I told. And the problem is also like if one camera is not working, you don't have, you can throw away the pictures of the other five. And you stitch it together in post-production and, and, and there's one picture from one camera is missing. So then it's, it's very complicated. You have to keep watching what's happening in, um, well, I talked a little bit about this. Let me, I would like to see this happening play, but probably it's not gonna work. Let's see if this happens. Hier zie je filming in Lebanon in een refugee camp. Ze hebben ook niet heel veel te doen hè, de hele dag. Wij zijn een soort attractie voor ze. Hans Jaap heeft voor dit programma zijn 360 graden camera meegenomen. Hij wil ons op een andere manier naar de vluchtelingenproblematiek laten kijken. Van binnenuit. Alsof je er zelf bij bent. Ja, dat is misschien de eerste tekst. <laughs> Het is mooi 
Omdat dit medium dwingt je eigenlijk tot betrokkenheid. Als jij een video Dank kijkt van Dank vluchtelingen, zoals ik hier ook gefilmd heb, dan ben jij zelf in dat kamp eigenlijk als kijker met deze bril op deze manier op. Dus je kunt niet meer wegkijken. Jij ziet alleen maar die video en waar jij je hoofd draait. Dan zie jij waar die camera, een van die camera's gefilmd heeft. In één ja. vloeiende beweging. Ja. Dus je kunt mensen nu meenemen naar plekken waar ze anders niet kunnen komen. Wow. En je kunt om je heen kijken. Wauw. Het is net alsof ik nu in de, in de zee stap. Ja. It's, um... There is one complicated element also when filming in 360 in this, this kind of environment. Usually when I film with like a regular camera like that, there are a lot of people when I'm filming say, oh, we don't want to be in the picture. We don't want to be filmed. Sometimes my interpreter, I work with local people, they say, look, you can film anything around, but not me. Because I'm working with a foreigner and my family lives in an area where ISIS is maybe the boss and they hate foreigners, Westerners. And so there are a lot of reasons sometimes when why people don't want to be in the picture. In um, a 360 video, they are always in the picture. And I think as a reporter, you have a responsibility to not film uh, people when they don't want it. So that's a complicated element. Um, I really have to ask people, uh, I really have to ask around if people are f okay with me filming. Sometimes I lie when I, th I think they're uh, only like... The, gr the Greek police, for example, asked me, no, no, they were also standing there when the boats arrived. said, no, no, please don't film us. I said, yeah, it's fine. I just put the camera there. Of course, they're in the picture. But I don't think their lives are threatened when they're in my picture. But uh, refugees, it's another story. So that's a complicated element. And that's we still have to work on what's the best way to do it. And some... I know there are videos now, 360, in war zones where... It's a lot of staging has happened. They then they really take some people and then it's almost like fiction that you create. But I think the most important reason why I do this is that I don't want fiction. I would just I just want more reality. That's the power of 360 video. Yeah, everybody says yeah, to this year will is the year of VR. Well, I, when I walk around here I see a lot of VR, and I think, okay, it is maybe the year of VR, but we're still very much in the beginning of everything, I think. We still need to develop the storytelling. How do we do it? How long can we tell stories? Uh, there's a VR cinema in Amsterdam, and uh, they, you can go there, you pay 12 euros, and you can watch a few short movies, only for half an hour, because after half an hour, you get sweaty, and, and you, it gets blurred, people get dizzy sometimes. It's still like, I think in, in five years' time we'll be laughing at, at this thing, like uh, big goggles and uh, maybe there are like well, glasses like this for VR then or uh, contact lenses, I don't know. So I in these early stages, it's still like, well, working on what can we do, how long can we do it. And we need better cameras, what I, what I already told. Um, higher resolution so that we have better view in this. When you watch this for the first time, you when I did, I wasn't bothered by the pixels, but I've watched so many movies now, and I think like, ah, oh, the quality is not really that good, and that, but it will get better in the future. And we also, I work a lot for public uh, radio and television, and, and also for newspapers and weeklies. Um, we still need to uh, convince the regular media that it is a powerful me new media. Uh, when I I started talking like last year, like a year ago, I started approaching TV uh, organizations in Holland and asking them like, look, there's a new technology, I showed them stuff. And I said, do you want to, do you want me to do a story with this? And then you can put it on the website. And I said, yeah, but it's only on the website. What can we do on TV with it? Well, on TV, you cannot do anything with it. It's um, KRO TV, that was like the, the movie you saw. We did something on TV, a report about Lebanon, about refugees, and I was shown in uh, that story. And, I, and then we could direct people to the website and, and on Facebook. But still, I, there are some people who are like early adapters. They, they, they uh, TV think like, this is an important new medium. 
But um, a lot of people think like, look, TV is the big thing. We have radio. We have stories and photos. What should we do with VR? So it's still like we're in the convincing phase. This is a camera that is already out, but not in Holland, I think. It's that belongs a little bit to this system. It's a nice small camera, but still the picture is roughly uh, what's filming there. And I think when you look at the future of journalism in 360 video, it, it can it might be popular at events. You could also do like live streaming. You could live stream. You should have a good connection, good camera, good reception connection. Um, and then you can have people like watching the American elections in Holland uh, real time through live streaming. But it is a, a lot of data. Also, by the way, filming with 360 GoPro, it's a lot of data that you have to go through. Uh, it's very heavy in your computer. Live streaming for sports, of, co uh, of course, uh, many of the VR videos that you see is like experiencing something. Like you are jumping from a cliff, uh, you're skydiving, you're on a race boat, you're in a race car. For that, I think it's, uh, it's a very nice thing for that, but I think it is also basically uh, a good new way uh, for any kind of reporting, for making portraits of people, like you, 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 you can follow like somebody from the parliament for a day, and the people have the feeling they are walking next to the parliament member and experiencing his day. Uh, and indeed for, for war reporting, what I do. A lot of the questions is are ab always about, will um, VR in the end TV replace TV? It's the same question that many people asked when um, new uh, technology uh, came about. When, um, when radio started to exist, uh, people said, well, will it replace uh, newspapers? Or when TV came about, will it replace radio? And I think in the end it will all coexist. And um, slowly, and it's like in the early phase of like, like radio, there was no content for radio because no people, uh, not many people had a radio at home. And it's the same thing now. Will people buy goggles? But there's not too much content. So probably you should add more content and then people will be convinced to buy uh, more goggles. So it's a bit uh, catch-22 to keep its balance. But I think in the, uh, in the coming years, every uh, TV organization, also the newspapers, they will continue. Many are experimenting right now. Some stopped, by the way, the BBC stopped and then started again. So in the end, everybody will, I think, continue doing it next to what they are already doing. It will not replace regular TV. Because I think it's an isolated experience. Um, there are some, because there are some problems with the system, I will, um, I will not show you uh, some stuff. Yeah, this is my suitcase. My suitcase is already full with all kind of stuff when I travel as a war reporter with a bulletproof vest, the, the solar panels, satellite phones. I have a radio equipment with me, a TV camera, and now also the GoPros. And that's, that's my life for the coming years. That's, uh, my suitcase became bigger and bigger. If I if I uh, g have money with me, yeah, yes. Can I do the bell? Yeah. Um, if you ever take money with you, like a lot of cash, uh, they do that in the in the army for if they uh, will be taken hostage by IS. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, well, friends of mine have been uh, taken hostage by ISIS, also killed. By the way, the Japanese journalist uh, that was killed last year was a friend of mine. Well, they, they killed him anyhow. I think they were negotiating, but uh, it, it's, it's not a, 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 a three R, a 360 related question, by the way. Eh? Sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay, but you I can... I saw uh, the picture of you. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's a very... Uh, it's always in my mind, by the way. Um, the people who have been caught by ISIS, for example, have been bought free for like four million. And then you need like more, <laughs> many suitcases like this. 
and my suitcase is filled with a G60 camera <laughs> and whatever. So no, I don't. I always have like thousands of dollars with me. Uh, so may more for the petty thief that he can, uh, if you get like uh, robbed or something, then they at least have something, and not like uh, empty-handed. But um, but it is also a worry when I'm at the front line. You saw these pictures with the car bomb. At front lines, I film like well, I know what to do with my small camera. I film like almost the camera like what's standing there on the tripod. But the the the, the six GoPros together, th the way I film now, is complicated. You have to stand there, look at it. Is every camera on? Hey, you switch. You switch the fir first. You switch six cameras on. Six things you have to do. Then the six cameras I press on record. You have to do that within 20 seconds. Um, that's a thing because of post production. Then I have to check if they are all like working because otherwise I can throw away everything I have. All the while, I'm not looking around what's happening there. If there's somebody approaching me, if somebody shooting, whatever you can shooting, you usually can hear, but sometimes you can feel something is changing in the background. So I really, at this very frontline situations, which would be very nice to film in 360, I would really love to wait for a better camera. Yeah, they're talking to me. There is one uh, from Nokia. I know the Uzo. It's fifty thousand. Yeah, th yeah, you're correct. Dollars. And the company I work with, Scopic, has the camera, but still, yeah, we have to find out if we're gonna use that. There's a camera, which is like fifty thousand uh, dollars, euros, it's almost the same. And um, yeah, now we're now in the process of talking about doing that, and but we're afraid that it's well, some in my business, a lot of equipment well gets destroyed while <laughs> being uh, filmed. Well, filming, I mean, uh, sand, bullets, whatever can happen. I mean, I'm not always like in the firing zone, but no. questions about anything? Don't be and scared. I, and, and I see duct tape there. I love that. Yeah, duct tape. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> well. <laughs> I have a war, a war <laughs> a report, a presentation on the same computer, by the way. I, I can continue doing that. <laughs> the duct tape we use, by the way, to put TV on the car. Also, when working for radio or a newspaper, but it's only cost you like not too much tape. But um, we used to do that, like uh, in the wars I reported in the past in Afghanistan, in Iraq in 2003. But nowadays, with the there's a lot of threat against journalists. We are really a target. So now it's not a sensible thing to do anymore. Like say, like, hey, here's a journalist driving. And then you get arrested, or like what he talked about, uh, abducted. So now what I try to do is like hide in between like local people sitting alone in a car and, and hope for the best. And not to be like too conspicuous that people say, like, hey, that's a reporter. Of course they will uh, recognize me um, as not being local. I In Afghanistan one day I, I dressed up like a local and then people came to me on the market, and they said, uh, "Look, the uh, the, the, the Shah Mahmoud, uh, the, the local Afghan dress." They said, "What you wearing? We usually use at night <laughs> to sleep in." I said, oh, "Okay, <laughs> fuck them," because uh, my interpreter <laughs> told me to wear that, and I think he just did it on purpose to to have me to, to have put me on the walk of shame uh, on the market, <laughs> and everybody would see like I'm 193. But that's the thing, and also the, like th this 360 camera. There is more than uh, people will ask, what is it? Well, and there's a lot of talk around and you are slower. I mean, the car bomb, I couldn't have filmed doing 360 and then survive. I mean, I was really like filming. And there was a lot of shooting. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, well. If you like, I'm focusing like on the camera. You could have been shot before you start the shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my business. Sorry. <laughs> we had a question here. Yeah. yeah so uh, I was wondering, uh, did you... When uh, you show at the start of the PowerPoint uh, pictures of you, uh, and you said, "Okay, I take my regular camera and yeah. run away and and film." Yeah. Um, why didn't you then? Why you don't take the 360 uh, like this? Press a button, let the, the camera run away, and come back later take the 360. Um, yeah. Well, in, in that situation, in that particular street, there's a lot of security, and I had to be very quick to film because they will. Uh, Get your camera and take the s the card out because they don't want. It's in the, the Kurdish area, for example. 
and they don't want the pictures out that it's unsafe there. Yeah. So you have to be, th the biggest danger is in a way that they get your camera, take the card out and step on it and then the picture is gone. Uh, so there's, and I was sure if I, I was the first journalist to arrive, I could sell those pictures to AP and I was filming at the same time pressing the photo button also and I sold it for you know, enough money. Uh, and the 360 is still like, uh, it's harder to sell 360 stories by the way yeah. than sell regular video. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience yeah. there in the front? It's a VIP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you uh, ever tried to uh, uh, use the 360 VR from the perspective of a child? Not yet. I know people have done that. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, um, yeah, that is interesting. You can then, then you can record the voice, I think, separately of a, si a child. You interview a child and then you show his daily life and then you put the voice under it. And that can be nice. And then, yeah. Because now still the perspective is uh, of the person watching and not being part. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were still like experimenting with different yeah. uh, things. Also, when we were editing the story of Lesbos, um, first, when I was filming, I thought like, okay, we're going to film a lot of scenes and then I'll put a voice over in it. And like you hear me talking like, oh, well this is happening, and then the refugee is coming. And we tried in the edit, we did. And I was watching it then, and I put it in the goggles, and I hated it. And I, I, I my voice is okay, but um, somehow it didn't feel good, like a voice from out of nowhere. And there, and you feel like you're present there when you watch it in this goggle. So I thought, no, I should be talking to the camera then. If I'm the reporter showing around, I will be there, and I'll guide you, and I will point like, look, if, if you want to look there, you can see this. Yeah and then get people through it. But it's still like uh, experimenting. Any other questions from your own? No. no. Uh, what is your next project on Chat? This is really interesting. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we well want to follow you. Um, I will be back in a war zone with the camera. Yeah. Um, we are still like talking to like um, TV uh, about projects that we can connect to TV, but it's like a, um, it's hard to, to, it's not hard to convince people who are working on the, f like editors and people who are other reporters, but sometimes higher ups in, in, in the organizations think like, what is this 360 video? We are a TV organization, what should we do with it? But I think it, it, it already becomes easier to convince people. So my next project will probably I will go back to Iraq or to northern Syria. There are some still some areas where I can go. And then maybe uh, we do the child thing. We have thought about that also. We just, we, it's not sure yet, yeah? You want to ask a question? No, you're just touching your hair or, no, that's okay, okay. <laughs> well, you, you still have a hand. <laughs> you could touch well, if you have, yeah? oh, oh. oh, you do. Yes, a follow up, even two questions. Well, you first. So. Just a little joke, but how do you uh, deal with the hide and seek um, of the 360? Because most of the time when you use 360, you don't want to be on the photo or on the video you, you are checking, you know? Yeah. And so how you deal to let the camera somewhere or have you some tips or some tricks? With the hiding. With, uh, yeah, with the hiding. Why you just hide? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, didn't you play hide and seek when you were young? Yeah, it's yeah, really the same. I mean, like, I mean, I, uh, I, I mean I just. Be in the beginning, what I, uh, we put it there, and then you clap in front of the head to, to everybody to synchronize uh, the thing for the edit. And then um, we run away, and we knew that the first 20 seconds we wouldn't use it because in the first 20 seconds we s you see two guys running away. And uh <laughs> but I later we did a few shots still, like with nobody in the uh, in the picture because uh, that was nice, uh, the quietness of the beach with all the uh, life jackets or whatever but um, I'm still in the picture somewhere now what I mostly do is I'm still somewhere it's like uh, this game find what is it find, find Elmo? Uh, the, uh, Charlie in French but it's um, oh, I don't remember now uh, and I think by the way yeah. it, it is the funny thing is also when watching it on the, on the, on the computer but um, the funny thing is that you can watch video so many times 
and get a and then take the perspective of uh, here when the, the refugees are arriving some well there's a lot of aid there uh, volunteers helping and I decided one day to like only follow one volunteer in this picture what is she doing is she helping and then you can look at other people hey that's a photographer how is he behaving and I think and I still really like that but I uh, the, the main reason why I like this media is, is like this thing you put it on and you're there you can look around like if you're here you can look around and I go to areas okay Lesbos you can go but well, you can go to Iraq if you want to but not many people will do that and I can take them there I can take them to the front line that I can take them to places where in the distance you can see uh, ISIS driving um, yeah the only thing I try to avoid is ending up in a 360 beheading video I mean like uh, but uh, that that will be. Uh, Let's definitely not. I don't want to be the go first for to that do that. One. Yeah. You do can make these funny little clips of of all you guys running away all the time. Yeah. <laughs> if you edit that in one uh, <laughs> clip, that would be funny. We had one question here. The guy writing down. <laughs> um. So you were talking about new ways of uh, telling a story yeah. for ju journalism. Uh, have you ever thought about implementing choice in? Side your journalism. Uh, well, you can say like, okay, we we can give the viewer a yeah. choice on how long they will s want to stay in a in a inside a scene. Now, what you can do is, is for example, uh, make a, a well, you can film a scene, a big scene where there's a lot of thi different things happening, and then you can put on the screen like if you want to follow this uh, certain. But then you have to do a, you have to do a lot of extra filming. You have to. If so you create. An, a new story. Yeah, you have to create new but stories. But I was more thinking about if you say every shot will be 20 seconds, you let the viewer decide when they want to skip to the next. Yeah, but that's very hard. Then you just have to put up every... Uh, it's not that interactive yet. No. I think. Yeah, I was thinking you have those little buttons. Yeah. And if you look to a button for two seconds, you can decide to skip to the next shot. Only that. So you can let the viewer decide when they want to skip the scene. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I, I hope that, that I'm no, not really a technical expert on that. So, uh but the thing is that uh, currently the, the uh, 360 uh, share 360, it's uh, kind of difficult because you don't have a lot of tools to share it. And so uh, if you do the video and you want to do what you, you are saying, you have to use software or gaming s d uh, design. And so it, it needs a lot of work behind. You know, uh, it's the main problem, I think. No? Probably it's something also for a later phase in, uh, in 360 video. I think 360 video is such a new thing that we also should try to stick to like the, the regular form of it now, I think. I like all 360 video. I mean, like, is this virtual reality? No, it's, it's really, it, it's much more. It's, it is reality, the 360 reality. <laughs> uh, do we have time for one last question? I'm looking at the stage management. Sorry? Oh, okay. then then I invite you to um, catch up with uh, with him uh, yeah, if a little bit watch later. Something in the in the in the goggles. Yeah, stay safe, <laughs> and I, I want to thank you for your time, and also thank you for risking your lives to bring these stories to us. Well, thank you. Thank All you. Right.